Hello guys and welcome back to the Figure Forecast podcast with your host Scarlett. I am doing a solo cast today for the very first time um, just to kind of wrap up my my season um, and talk about kind of lessons that I've learned along the way and reasons why I did finish my season early um, and just kind of talk through the 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 do's and don'ts that I've learned from this prep from this year um and things that I've taken away from obviously the guests that we've had on the podcast as well um which I think have played a massive part in sort of my ability as a as an athlete to make the decisions that I have done um so I'll kick it off with kind of where I started so obviously I started prep um, the second week of March this year, um, I was with a different coach um, and I started prep at 86 kilos. So I'm five foot six and um, I thought that I was a bit of a unit, you know, definitely thinking I had a lot of gains under there. Really excited to get started with prep after doing, you know, a very long off season um, and, you know, following following the plan to a T. Um, in the hope of being an absolute unit is what we all want out of an off season, isn't it? Um, so yeah, start prep then, um, everything was kind of moving all right. Um, and then obviously had a little bit of a trouble with kind of progress, things not really moving. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I did kind of switch coaches um, among some other things, but obviously there is no bad feelings towards the decision that I make like I feel like you know people do struggle to change coaches when they feel like the fit isn't right anymore and you know if it's if it's the right decision for you if you're in a prep or not um you know you've got to do, do what's best for you um so I did change coaches kind of mid prep um after about six weeks on prep that's when I decided to change um and since I did move coaches, things did move. I did obviously achieve the goal of stepping on stage. Um, but one thing obviously I will note is the the time frame. So like when obviously coaches are planning your preps and obviously you work kind of backwards from the show, what kind of position you're in when you start and like rough estimate of what's to come off. And obviously there is always more to come off than you think. Um, and, you know, looking at my body, um, you know, there was a lot to come off. And, you know, we did, we had a lot of time, but that time wasn't long enough, if that makes sense. Because, you know, your body does get very resi resistant over a long period of time when preps are longer, but so does your mind as well. Um, so, yeah. My prep was a total of 30 weeks from the start to my show that I did. So that was 30 weeks long. Um, and I came down 23 kilos in that time. Um, and roughly, you know, you, you want to be kind of looking at, you know, dropping to a kilo a week as, as such at the start. Like, you know, if you're if you're mapped out, well enough and, and you know you're, you're seeing that kind of trend down you do want to see things moving quite regularly or at least body composition changing regularly like especially towards the back end and like when that doesn't happen you know there's there's lots of different reasons as to why um and a lot of the time it is because your body does get adapted to 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 the deficit you know and I when I swapped coaches my calories were already quite low. So my starting point wasn't wasn't the best. I was quite out of shape. Um, like this is obviously me looking back on reflection at the time, you know, you don't really think about that. Um, so yeah, like in reflection, obviously I needed calories to be higher. I needed to not be as far away from stage weight. Um, so yeah, I had I had a lot on my plate and it was a task that, you know, me being stubborn, I was like, right, I am 
I'm doing it. I'm getting on that stage because I've worked for like so long. Um, I needed to get back up there for myself um, and just, you know, bring something that I, I was proud of of, of doing and, and knowing that I did everything that I possibly could to to get there um which is you know what what prep's all about I suppose um well apart from the competing part but <laughs> is a per- from a personal goal perspective um so yeah I did compete um it coming up to th- four weeks so at the week at well three and a half weeks ago so um when this will be up it'll have already been <laughs> so yeah it's, it was a total of like four weeks from the first show to the second show my original plan was obviously to do another show in the middle of that um but I'll go into why I didn't do that so when I competed obviously I got as lean as I could and um, the look was good um but obviously for figure um you know you do you do have to be nutty condition like obviously not WPD like striated glutes and stuff but people do come in that lean um, and sometimes the judges like that sometimes they don't but I knew from obviously being around figure competitors speaking to figure competitors like you know you know you see what the look is meant to be Um, you know I knew that I was still carrying more body fat than I needed to to to, to be that that level of, of stage condition. But I mean, I got up on stage and I did it anyway. Um, so with that being said, um, I obviously had the show, feedback was obviously that condition and I knew. So instead of doing the second show, um, I said, let's, well, I never said, like I spoke with my coach and we said like, let's just push for another four weeks, because you can do a lot in that time. Let's just dig, 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 get as lean as possible for the the finals, um, and then obviously reverse out. So that was the plan, and and I felt really confident in doing that coming off stage. I had my lovely burger off plan, um, and you know had a little bit of downtime on the the night of the show, and then literally just got straight back to it the next day, um which I was really excited to do. Like I was switched on. I was like, right, we've got like three and a half weeks to just absolutely dig, nail this. Like I can do it. I'm almost there. It's a finish line. Um, you know, when you've been working for like 30 weeks and your head is like super, super hyper-focused, like tunnel vision, um, you know, like you just get cracked on. Like there's no other distractions. You just, you just work. Um, but then I got sick. So I don't know if it was a result of like the the adrenaline crash from the show or being around people and um, it being quite fatiguing or what, but like I got like really, really sick. Um, like it, it wasn't like a long sickness, but it was like, it just took over my body and I, I couldn't do anything like, and for like two days, it really kind of upset my, my headspace as well, because I was like, I'm running out of time here. The pressure's on. I'm in bed. I can't do anything about it. Like, shit. <laughs> um, so that really kind of got in my head. And I think when you are in a prep and in like the back end of a prep as well, like when your when your head starts to fall off, um, you know, it it can be really hard to get it back on. Um, and you know, then you create a lot more stress, and you know, your body responds very sensitively to stress in that kind of leaner state and and in that fatigue state as well so yeah it was quite challenging for me to to get out of my own head and just you know pull myself around and do it so I did kind of battle with myself for that week that that week after show was kind of a shall I continue shall I not shall I continue shall I not um so that's kind of what I wanted to like talk about in this kind of part is is like knowing when to pull the plug on yourself, like knowing when to stop, like knowing when, when quitting is the, the, the better option of the two. Like, obviously like as athletes, as people who compete, we do feel like there's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves, you know, when we're documenting things on Instagram or saying we're going to do things and, you know, people are watching your journey. And regardless of whether you've got like 50 followers or like 
500,000 followers. Like, you know, you, people invest in you and, and people like to um, watch what you do and they're inspired by what, what you do. So in a way, you kind of feel like, you know, if you do quit, then then you're letting them down or you're saying you can't do the things that you said you were going to do, for instance. So it's kind of, it does have that like part to play in it. But knowing when to quit and quitting because of the right reasons, I think is something people shouldn't be scared to do as athletes. Like bodybuilding, there is always going to be shows. There is always going to be more opportunities to come there's always going to be times for you to step back and then do it again like there's no real pressure the pressure that you actually put on is from yourself um and when your kind of headspace goes or things start to deteriorate in your in your lifestyle like you know if you're finding it difficult to work or you know you've lost relationships with people and you're just not in a good place like continuing to push just for the sake of of a show sometimes isn't the right thing to do and I think you know I I feel like that was where I was battling with before I made that decision and then when I did actually make that decision the amount of people who actually supported that decision um was unbelievable like and it was kind of what I was afraid of doing was actually the opposite of what I should have been afraid of doing. So like, that's why I am putting this out there as well. Like, because I think a lot of people do run themselves into the ground, um, either mentally, physically and financially, because let's be real, competing is expensive as fuck. Um, if you're not 100% there and you're not going to bring your best, like, then pull back. Like, there is no reason why you can't like you are in control of making that decision to stop um and then and then you are then there to continue and do it again in the future like you it shouldn't be at the like detriment of of your mindset and your mental health um because that could jeopardize your future in doing it again and if it is something that you enjoy which for me, like, I really do love competing. I love the prep. I love the whole pushing yourself and, you know, kind of that challenge. Like, I love it until I until I didn't. And, and when I didn't in that short space of time, it was quite scary because I didn't want to not love it. Do you know, like, obviously being tired and ill and stuff like that, like, had a big part to play in it, yes. But you know, not wanting to go to the gym, not wanting to get out of bed, like not wanting to face my phone or show up or do things that like I actually genuinely do love doing um, was a big sign for me that I needed to to step in and and do that. Um, so I think over like weighing out the, the sort of cost versus the result is is a big thing um when it comes to to this kind of thing like you know you've got to think like if you if you're continuing to push and you're in in you're in a bad headspace like and you're just churning out money just to show up just so you can say you did it like it's sometimes it's just not worth it it really isn't worth it um so yeah that's my um that's my little reasoning as to kind of why I did stop in a sense um because I knew that I wasn't going to have enough time to bring a much better package than the original show that I did because like when I'm talking about time um yeah yes you can do a lot in three weeks at the end of a prep but if you're not 100% switched on to be able to recover and and mentally push and mentally like go to that place where you've got to go when you've got an hour on the stairs. Like if you can't do that and you can't mentally be there, um, then you're not going to be able to do it in that time frame. So that was me kind of like looking at the bigger picture and thinking like, yes, I could be a stubborn bitch and, you know, pay hundreds of pounds again to do another show to get back on stage and have a, physique that is a little tiny bit leaner than the last time I'll feel like absolute crap mentally physically I'll be running to the ground who knows where my headspace will be and um, 
is that going to really be worth it? And that was kind of why I made that decision to uh, to stop and not continue to to push with the prep. Um, because, you know, for me, like, I feel like if that self-belief is gone in your ability to, to bring something better, because that's what you want to do, sure, sure, you want to improve, you don't want to get worse, you don't want to turn up and look like a bloody bag of shite <laughs> um so for me it just it just wasn't it just wasn't worth it um and that would have meant an extra sort of four weeks in a prep state um which for a female 30 35 weeks prepping is a long time not just mentally but physiologically as well like um you know I have lost my cycle um about two or three months now um you know it's something that come that mine is very irregular anyway and and it's something that does go when when I prep or when I when I'm kind of in this sort of more stressed state as well so like you know little things like that like continuing to to kind of push against health reasons um I think is a massive thing to think about as a female like you're gonna take it's gonna take longer to to recover from um the longer you're in that kind of hole. Um, so, you know, I think when when you can recognize them them situations, um, speaking to people, you know, being honest plays a massive part um, in helping you. Because like, since I obviously made that decision to, to, to do that, I've been able to be in a much better headspace to start my reverse diet and successfully complete, not complete, but I'm still obviously doing it, like reverse diet. Um, Because I think if I had continued and headspace would have been in a completely more mashed up place, I'd have been lot leaner, a lot more depleted, a lot more fatigued. Would I have been able to do the things I'm doing now a lot more clearly with a lot more kind of execution? Probably not, no. So I probably would have been in a worse place as well. So I think thinking a little bit kind of long term. And if you haven't listened to the episode from Jake about reverse dieting, like one thing that's really stuck in my head is something that he said which is obviously short-term pain for long-term gain and I think that definitely has helped me with coming to them realizations of like when to call it a day to think about longevity in the sport rather than just like getting back up on stage for the sake of it um so yeah that is kind of one of the reasons why I pulled my prep early I mean I still got on stage so I am very proud of that um and you know even if you are somebody who doesn't make it to stage and you feel like it's the time to call it a day that is okay as well because you know you know yourself better than anybody else and if your headspace does start to 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 go and you feel like you you know it's not right or you're not enjoying it or, you know, you're not willing to sacrifice the things that you need to do anymore, like, then that's okay. That is okay. And I think that there's a lot of stuff on Instagram and, you know, things that like, or even YouTube and stuff that, you know, people show the highlights, people show, you know, the stuff they want to show you. Um, But, you know, behind closed doors prep isn't, a pretty sight it isn't an easy feat um and it's a big commitment to to do when I think if you're not 100% all in and you're not 100% you know believing that what you are doing is for you um and something that you enjoy like then yeah it's it's just not going to be something that you're going to be able to to follow through with and come out the other end unscathed, <laughs> shall we say? Um, so yeah, that is kind of like the reasons why. Obviously, I am good because oh, I had the best bikini from uh, 
Sue's from Miss Bikini Fitness and I'm gutted that I literally only got to wear it once and will only be wearing it once because obviously I don't know if you've seen but obviously people who follow me on Instagram and stuff um, I am going to be changing classes as well bye bye figure um, because of the outcome of the first show so yeah like not only was I not lean enough um there was a very big kind of well how can I say it it was very obvious that I was still very unproportioned in terms of like my upper body and um, obviously us figure girls we want that big thick back we want them big shoulders that little kind of waist and taper um and my genetics is very much lower body. Well, the front anyway. Um, like my quad insertions are quite high. So they, they're very like bulgy, if that makes sense. Very round, rounded rather than like sleek and, you know, long. Um, so they did stick out a lot. And I think that when you kind of put me on the lineup, um, they... It, it automatically did just draw you straight to my legs, which is obviously not what you want in figure. Like I, I've I've practiced posing for years to try and make my upper body look fucking bigger than my bottom half. Um, and you know it when you when you're on stage and you're next to people who are in that shape and are in that condition, it just highlights it a lot. And yeah, I could definitely improve um and build on my upper body if I wanted to. Um, but my strengths are naturally, well, not naturally, like, I mean, it's come from my back sporting background um, in my, are in my lower body. So um, for those of you that don't know, um, obviously we did it in the, in the intro when we first started the podcast, but um, I was a competitive powerlifter for five years before I started um bodybuilding um I had literally no lats no back no shoulders from that because you know powerlifters we arch we use our lats to bench a little bit of chest like I had no shoulders um so like but squats were my thing they were my most strongest lift um and where a lot of my density like was already there when I started to change to bodybuilding like I was already always a bit shit at deadlifts like my my posterior lacked a lot of development um so yeah like from a from a starting point building like my training in my off season was to bring up my upper body which I definitely have um but my legs have still joined the party as well so <laughs> it has come to that realization um and obviously with that has come for me to try and push in a different direction um when it comes to the next time I will be on stage whenever that will be I have no idea I don't really have any plans yet because I don't know how my body is going to respond to my new training in my new class which is uh I'm gonna say wellness but I mean right I I'm not going to be calling myself a wellness athlete yet because there is no glutes there yet and that is what the wellness class is right so I am basically just going to be training a lot more glutes hamstrings quads adductors all of that lower body stuff still training upper body um a little bit like shoulders and um, lats and a little bit of sort of uh triceps and stuff um to just obviously complete the look because obviously wellness you do still have to have a little bit more upper in terms of um like compared to bikini um but I've probably just about got that <laughs> so yeah I'm probably like wellness upper now but not bigger upper <laughs> um but yeah I, I just we decided that we would play around with a few pauses um and just just change it up a bit. I will still be very much a figure girl, a figure fan. Um, it is, you know, the class I love. I think it's fantastic. But for me, like, I I need to go with where my body wants to grow. Um, 
And I think obviously, if we look at the episode that we did with with Maddie the other week, like similar with her, like she's gone from wellness to figure, like because her upper body wanted to grow. Um, and I think when you're when your body naturally wants to do that, like just let it. Like I'm excited to see like what I can do when I actually do train my legs properly and I do train my glutes properly and I do train my hamstrings properly because for the past two years, I have been doing them probably like every like nine days, shall we say. And one of them's been like a quad day, one of them's been a hamstring day. Um, it's It's not been like massively like, legs, 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 which my new plan is. <laughs> um, so I'm interested to see more than anything how that goes um, and just kind of push for it. And I think because of that decision with everything else that's gone on with the prep, um, you know, it's allowed me to maintain control, maintain that kind of um, level of focus with my reverse diet because now I'm like I need to get my calories as high as possible and have the best starting point so that I can get all the new begins and you know get myself started and, and pushing towards this next goal like I think it's been really really beneficial for me to to do this rather than kind of be like right okay so we're sticking with figure we're gonna not train legs like maybe train legs like once every two weeks for the next two years and then you'll be competitive and figure it's like that would probably be my man and my other option and I'm just like would I really enjoy that training like don't get me wrong like I love training shoulders I love training back but I'll still be able to do that um but now I'll be able to really train my legs and really you know get into that and with like my background in where I've come from like that is where I love to train like I, I love to do them grindy heavy leg days like that make, give you anxiety and make you feel sick like that is in a weird sick way like what what I love to do and the way that I love to train and I think if that was taken away then I probably wouldn't really be as invested in the journey as 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 I as I should be to to warrant the next prep or you know the next growing phase I think like you know you've got to you've got to really en enjoy the work and I think if you don't and you don't enjoy the like the like I know for me personally like this is like a fucking massive massive goal <laughs> like you know I am not got a wellness glutes um but structurally like I've got the shape to build on. So I'm excited to like, to to try and to push and to, to you know, get stuck in and, and see what I can do. Like, it's again, another like unknown territory. And I think that if you, if you, if you lean into that, like it, it, it's exciting. Like, and I think too many people don't like try new things at all. Like give themselves a, a go at trying something different because they're, you know, they're frightened that it might not work. And God, like, I might get, like, a year down the line or six months down the line and I've still got a pancake ass and I'm like, all right, okay, maybe I should go back to figure then. Do you know what I mean? Like, that could be an option. Like, it, it it's not going to not be an option. Or I could literally train like a savage for, like, the next eight months with my calories super fucking high and rock up, rock up next year like a bloody Brazilian. <laughs> which is what I'm hoping. <laughs> but like, you know, I mean, it, it's it's one of them, like, don't be afraid to make, like, make a change if it's suited for you. Like, if it's, you know, something that you want to do, like the amount of people who change classes and change direction and stuff is like all the time. Like there's been actually so many comp like competitors that we've had on the podcast that have come from different classes that have moved up from different classes or moved across from different classes or do you know what I mean? And I think like, you know, you don't have to just stick to one thing um, just because you think you have to, like if, if it's not going to work for you and you don't enjoy it, like, or you don't think you will enjoy the work that you have to do, um, then, then change because 
you're the boss like you no one no one's forcing you to do any of it um so yeah I think like as long as you looking after your you know your your, your mindset and, and your headspace is in a good place and you're kind of you know you you're on this journey for you then you know whatever you decide to do is is ultimately your decision and and you're never letting anybody down I always feel like people people stop themselves from doing stuff because you know they feel like they're letting the coach down or they feel like they're letting the friends down or that's their Instagram followers down like man no one actually gives a shit like you've got to do you like you've got to do what you want to do um and sometimes just putting your hands up and being like right I'm not doing this anymore I'm gonna do something different so get used to it (laughs) and that's basically like where I'm at um so yeah I am now three and a half weeks three and a half not two and a half weeks into my reverse diet um and my calories I'm not sure what my calories are to be honest like I'm just ba- I'm going off a meal plan um so I have I, I worked out the carbs I've probably got an extra 200 grams of carbs in now than when I started the reverse um and I started my reverse at the same weight that I am now. So basically I have been reverse dieting for like two and a half, coming up to three weeks now. Um, I am now 64.7 this morning. I think my lowest weigh, like even pre-show, after show was like sort of 63 point something when I've been like depleted and like zero carb and that day that I was really sick like they were like low end 63 but for the most part of like this whole reverse I've been between like low 64 and then this is like my highest I've been so 64.7 is the highest I've I've weighed in at um I've had an off-plan Sunday roast um and I've also had an off-plan burger chips um as well in that time um so but my body is actually really 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 enjoying it and I think it's because it has been done really slowly um and it has been done purposely with my my headspace still being in that prep mode as well like I love all my meals like I I I ate this way in off season like I didn't eat shit I didn't like you know, I, I, I don't eat that way anymore. So like for me, like it was more so just about getting a little bit more food in. So I had more energy and like, I've had like zero cravings. I've had zero kind of want to binge or overeat, um, which has been a massive win for me because my last time, my last season, um, God, binging was bad. Like, you know, I, I I think I ate like a full box of Cocoa Pops in, in one sitting um, and it didn't even touch the sides and I was bloated. I had bloody swollen knees, swollen face. Like, you know, it, it was not good. Um, so I think I've learned my lessons from that as well going into this reverse. Like, because I was always a little bit scared of reversing anyway, just with that kind of that memory of how shit the last time went well like mentally and just how I was um so like yeah basically this reverse has been fantastic so far like if you haven't listened I know I mentioned that episode about reverse dieting but if you haven't listened to that episode that is basically exactly what I've been doing so daily check-ins and based off of look scale weight how I feel um we've either kept food the same on to the next day or we have trickled a little tiny bit more in. And when I say trickled, it's like being like 10 grams here, 10 grams there. Like it's been nothing major, but then over a course of like a week's like set, I've had like double the amount of food put in and my body weight has stayed the same. So like, obviously I want to get my body weight up because like I am feeling skinny, like I'm ready to like feel a little bit more fuller now. Um, But if I can get as food up as high as I possibly can and still stay relatively lean like I know my body's going to be willing to to grow so much more um from that so yeah I'm just being like 
sensible, but not forcefully. Like I actually just want to eat this way and I just want to, you know, give my body nutrition so that it gets better. Because I think when you've starved <laughs> for seven months um, and you've run yourself into a fatigue hall, like giving your body actual nutrition and rest is going to thank you for it. Like rather than filling your emotional hunger with sugar and takeaways and all of that stuff that, you know, you do lean towards on the back end of post show, like if you do let it get out of control, because, you know, you're never really going to fill that hunger because it's not real hunger. Like it, it, it's, it's emotion. It, it's, it, it's a different kind of feeling that you that you never, ever, ever really satisfy. Um, so if you can just kind of keep within your routine and you do everything the same, like I've still been getting up at the same time, been getting up and doing my steps, doing my work at the same time, training at the same time, eating at the same time, like nothing has changed because it's how I enjoy to live. And um, I've just had a little bit more food in and I've had a couple of days out and I actually wanted to have them days out because I had the energy to do it and I actually wanted to do it. Um, so I think definitely playing it the way that I have is going to set me up so much better for what's to come. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to actually getting my calories up because I did think that I was going to be one of them people who just never had carbs high enough to not be in the the deaths on a prep. Like, um, yeah, because... I don't think even in my off season when I was like at my highest body weight of like, God, I was like knocking on 90 at one point. And I don't think my carbs got any higher than 300 to like 280, 300, um, which in theory, like, you know, for the amount of weight that I gained um, made me believe that maybe I was a little bit insulin resistant or something, or I just couldn't eat carbs. Um, but I've proven that wrong by this because my carbs are probably already at 250 now and I'm still very lean. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to just really get stuck in and, and be smart with these next kind of month or so, or however long it takes until I'm, I've reached that point where, you know, we hold and stuff. Um, you know, I'm I'm happy to continue as I am because I mean I'm gonna to continue to eat this way anyway, so it makes no difference, you know. Um, because yeah, I wanna I wanna set myself good and proper. Like I wanna be in the 500 gram carb club, like what Maeve is like, you know, she used to send me pictures of a bloody meal plan and she'd be on a diet and she'd be on more food than me, and I'd be like what's going on? Why am I broken? <laughs> so this, this is like, this is the time where we get the calories up, we get the training done. And then, you know, when the time is right to prep again, I will be prepping for a different class, hopefully anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have waffled. I don't know if I, I covered all my points I wanted to cover, but yeah, in a nutshell of my prep, um, it was a long prep because of my obviously high start and body weight, um, which is something that I won't be doing again. Um, and yeah, just knowing, just knowing when to stop and knowing that it's okay to stop and change direction. If you ever do feel like that is, you know, going to benefit you in the long run, because, you know, there's only one of you, you know, there's lots of bodybuilding shows. You can always do another one at a different time. Um, so don't ever feel like you can't. Um, and it's something that like I will always, I will always push for. Like if you know, if you need to take a break from something, if you know, if you feel like you've been dieting too long or you feel like you've, you know, pushed the envelope a little bit too far in terms of what you can manage and um everything else in the mix of life because you know I'll, I'll not I'm not gone into everything else that's gone on 
in that in them 30 weeks that I had to deal with as well as prepping but you know you've got to remember that you've you've got life to to play as well um so keep yourself right and make sure that you do look after number one first put yourself first always think um you know how would you how would you treat someone that you love and if 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 that is how you would treat someone that you love then that's bang out <laughs> Uh, it's very hard to do for yourself, but it is it is worth it, honestly. Um, you know, the more you look after yourself, the more you look after your mind, the better your body's going to be, the better you're going to work, the better you're going to want to work. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to wrap this episode up here before I start re-saying things I've already said. Um, but I hope you found some value in this solo episode. Um, and thank you for tuning in and listening. Um, it's been a ball. It's been weird not having my little uh, my little co-host on the other side of this uh, this window. But um, yeah, I uh, thank you all for listening. Um, please do give it a like, subscribe, and share. And uh, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported the podcast so far. And uh, we will be back next week with another epic guest. Um, and I will have my lovely mate back. So thank you very much. I shall speak to you next week. Um, bye. <laughs>